Today we are going to be working on this hat. Now the first hat I made was this one. And I showed it to my husband and he said, Oh, it looks like a pineapple. So, hence, I called this beanie pineapple twist. So, let's get started. Today we're going to be using this yarn, Lauren Cake Wool. And the beanie will take the whole cake. Okay, so we'll be using the complete cake. Okay, we're going to start with a normal cast on, an over and under, over and under okay. cast on. And we're going to do 65 rows of normal knitting. Needle one, and needle one, leave a tail. The usual over and under, over and under, over and under. All the way around the bed of the machine. These machines are so creaky starting off. Back to needle one, right needle and needle one. In through the yarn feeder. I'm using the middle tension gauge for this yarn. I'm going to zero my counter because the cast on row does not count. It's part of my row numbers. And we're going to do 65 rows of plain knitting. I'll probably fast forward through all this, okay? So off we go. Keep an eye on all these little loops and make sure you've got. Um, when you look around the bed, you can see that there are two along there, and that's when you know that you've cast on correctly. That's what I was told. <laughs> okay, here we go. Take the first row a little easy while everything beds in. And then after that, then you can picked up a little more speed and the machine sounds a little smoother after row uh, two or three as well. We're on row two already and I'm pleased to say as a side note that since I repaired the counter on my machine just after I had it it failed on if I remember row 59 on my first ever project. Um, I'm very glad to say that um, touch wood it's um, it's fine so far. Here comes the fast forward. We're doing 65 rows in total of just ordinary plain knitting. wrapping and stitch making so here we go not far off row 65 so here we go now at the beginning of row 66 that's the last needle row 65 uh, on needle one needle one is just coming up there we're going to move the arm and we're going to push it forward to here and this is where we start uh, wrapping two needles, so we'll be wrapping these two needles and then knitting needle three. And we'll do that all the way around the bed for 18 rows. So here we go. What I find is if you pull two needles up and make sure this needle is very, very slightly higher than that one. And you just take the yarn, take the yarn, round, and back around. And again, from mistakes, make sure that you've got it hooked right under these the hooks of the needles here. So crank forward, and as that one comes up, the needle three comes up, put the yarn underneath. And as the two needles next come up, again slightly higher than that one, you then should be able to do it with one hand. Wrap around, make sure that the yarn is underneath the hooks. Crank around. And on to the next one. And we'll do this for the next 18 rows. Making sure this under the hooks. And do the next one. Under the hooks. 
and do the next one. And do the next. And do the next one. So we wrap. And knit. And it creaks like Obelio. So we wrap two. Knit one. Oops. Wrap two. Knit one. I'm not keeping the tension very tight here. It's, it's it's just as it comes out of my hand only. Knit one. Knit one. I always find if you leave it on a knit one, just something like Callum said I believe, leave it on a knit one, you, you won't lose your place so much. Again, a little higher than that one. I can do it with one hand then. I'll make sure it's ending the perks. Wrap two. Knit one. Wrap two. Knit one. Wrap two. Knit one. Wrap two. And we're back around to knit one. Now this is where the pattern I tried of Karen's um, lazy links or diagonal links pattern didn't work on here for me. She's using an RD46 and this is a Central 48. And every time I went round on a circle I ended up on needle one, whereas on the RD I believe it jogged forward one for three rows until it came back to the first needle, which gave it that stagger in, in the pattern. So I ended up with um, the rivers and rapids straight lines, which you, you see here. So. We'll carry on around, I'll do another row and then I'll finish off um, the next um, 16 rows after that. Okay, on my own I'm going to come back and I forgot to zero my counter. So after the two rows I'll zero it, so when we come back it'll be on 18. Okay, so we are on... Next one. And wrap. Next one. Carry on going, knit, and wrap, knit, and wrap, make sure it's underneath, knit, and wrap, knit, and wrap. It's not too bad once you get going. At first it just seems a little laborious, but when you see it come out at the end, it's like, oh, this is so nice. Knit. Wrap. You can choose under there again. Knit. And wrap. Knit. And wrap. Knit. So just missing one. The two needles up, so I know it's a wrap. I hope I don't go wrong on this pigeon. Wrap, sorry. And then knit. And then you know when you come back to the white needle on a knit, you know you have lost your space. Or your place, rather. So I'm going to... Zero my counter now because we've done two rows and we need to do 18. And I'm going to do the next 16 and I'll come back. Okay, I thought I'd just stop briefly to show you that I've bunched this up now in the middle. And already you can see the, the lines coming through here, which start the um, former ribs. Um, so I'm going to finish now to row 16 while I'm filming and then I'll fast forward a little bit. We're starting now again, next row, wrapping these two needles here, putting this one up slightly higher than that one, and wrap, making sure it's under the hooks, completely under the hooks, I can't stress that enough, 
or they will drop off. From experience, I know that. So wrap that. I treat them as groups of three, three stitches, three ingles, sorry. Um, so wrap and one. Okay, so we're back at row 15 and we've got one more row to do before we move on to the next pattern. So we start off with wrap two, and it one again, wrap two and it one all the way around. This is the end of that hook. You can nearly caught me out there. when I came to this kind of point in my original yellow hat that I realised the pattern wasn't going the same way as uh, Karen's um, Lazy Lynx pattern and I thought, oh, they're looking a little straight down there. 
Okay, so I thought I'd move on to uh, a different technique and then that's how I ended up with a hat. It was supposed to be a swatch. So um, that's what happened there. And it was, as Bob Ross used to say, a happy accident. So we're on needle, the white needle. So this is row 16 and 19. So this is the start of row 19, so zero your clock. Um, and start at needle one, wrapping two pegs. So we finish on the knit there. And now we're going to move on to wrapping two pegs at a time. And we do this for one row. So we're not knitting at, at all now after the wrap, okay? It's just um, wrap two, wrap two. And this is like um, Karen's Lazy Links. Wrap two, and again it helps if this needle is ever so slightly higher than that one, and again ensure that it goes under these hooks here. Wrap two, wrap two, all the way around the bed of the machine. Again, I'm controlling the um, tension with my hand. It's um, it's not too tight. It's not too loose. It's kind of just just until it's you can feel it grabbing there a little bit. Oops. And we'll just do this all the way around the bed until we come back to the right needle. notes to make sure I'm uh, not going to get it wrong. I've only done this twice before. Once was a poor fluke and second time to test my notes. The end on the white needle. So we wrap the white needle. And we end up then at needle one. So there we put the yarn back in the yarn feeder. And now we're going to do one complete row. Taking it easy. One complete row. I'm not sure if I've lost a stitch there. You can see now I'm on the way around. And there. Uh, just to be careful, they are temperamental beasts. I might have to go back now and fix that, okay? So. I had a couple of. I uh, dropped stitches off the little teeth there, so I've been picking them up with the loom pick. So hopefully on row one, be careful when you go into the, row one. It is temperament. Now this is row two of the knit. And we're going to end on 46. Needle for 46, which is coming up now. So we're going to knit needle 46. And then with these two are up, which is um, 47 and 48. So we're now we're going to start the double wrap again now from needle 47 and 48. And this is what we do all the way around the machine uh, for the next 22 rows. It's going to be a pattern row, two knit rows, and it is a little quicker until we don't get any drop stitches. It makes my heart go when I get a drop stitch because I'm not that, I'm, I'm relatively new to this, and every time I get a drop stitch, oh, my heart sinks, because I don't really understand really how to rescue it, I need a bit more. I don't want any more practice of drop stitches, but I need more practice of how to rescue a drop stitch. So double stitching all the way around.
And remembering it's easier if this one's a little bit higher than that one, make sure to go under these hooks. And you can usually wrap them with one hand. Oops, under that, make sure it's under that hook. Sometimes you can get lost in a bit of a daydream wrapping world and you just forget or you just don't see it and you zone out. There we go, and we're going to end up these two, I don't remember whether you have them or not, and then start knitting We're going to end now on needle 46. I suppose you know, I'll drop one again. I'll pick that up now. And, and, uh, I'll get that right. So we knit 46, two needles up, and we start the double wrap, double wrap all the way again. So we'll do that now for the next 22 rows. One row of double wrap, two rows of knit. The second row of knitting ends on row four, um, needle 46. Sorry. And then you start the double wrap again. Uh, I'll come back when I get um, close to the end and I sort out a couple of these drop stitches. Okay. Okay, so here we are back at row 18. I've got one row of wrapping to do and two rows of knit and then a few knits because my ball, uh, my ball of uh, yarn is coming to an end. So we do that from 47 48. And I have had a few drop stitches, I have to say. Um, which has been, yeah, I don't know if the machine likes this uh, yarn or not, but anyway, we'll see as you go along. Um, okay, double wrapping all the way around, double wrap, double wrap, all the way around, this is the final row of double wrap, I like that. slackers tension. It should be two rows now but it'll just be until the yarn runs out really because you're on 19. So watching now for stitches that drop. I'm going to cast off now. And the final two. And we've cast off our pineapple twist beanie. 
I'll come back now when I've uh, I'll move the machine out of the way and we'll stretch it out and uh, see what we've got. It looks okay so far. Things crossed. This is how it looks as it comes off the machine. It's um, quite chunky looking because I think the yarn I've used is um, is an iron yarn which I absolutely love. Iron yarn. The original one I, I made, which ended up being a happy accident. That's the. Um, the yellow one there. Um, it, it's a little floppy for my taste, a little, a little loose. So that's why I decided to try the iron one. So um, and then this was the second one, and then we've just done this one together. So, so the usual thing is to stretch it. So there we go. Stretch it out, and it looks really quite nice. Now then, you could extend that or extend that or do that or just do that for a hat. Um, combinations are endless I guess. I mean you could do a different colour here and have that showing through the laciness there. If you did a you know a contrasting colour behind that that would be quite nice. So you could do whatever you wanted to do. So um, assembling the hat um, is the same procedure as uh, we just cinch up, cinch up the cinch, cinch up the ends. Oh, that's not easy to say. Um, cinch up the ends. Uh, I'm definitely not the quickest at doing this. I'm trying to make sure that my hands are in view. And apologies for my hands. I've been decorating upstairs, so I've got slightly rough fingertips. And I'm learning to play the harp, so it doesn't <laughs> doesn't help when you're working with wool that your fingers actually stick to it sometimes. And I've actually got fibres from when I made I made this um, myself out of some material, uh, you know, fur fabric, full fur fabric. And again, the um, the fibres seem to be everywhere, so that's the beanie. And you can fold it up. I think I have done this one slightly different on the layers, guys. Well, actually, quite. There you go. That's how you make a pineapple twist bean. I hope you like it. It's popping back in now. And thinking about putting a pom pom on the top. Which one do you think? That one. That's quite good. Oh, that one. Now that I bought these, <laughs> after making such a mess with the other one. Oh, I'm not quite sure. Maybe that one. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care.